Hello there! My name is Nate, and welcome to another exciting video here on the island of Luzon in the Philippines. Today, you're in for quite a treat. I'm standing in front of the initial phase of development in New Clark City, which is located in the province of Tarlac, about 100 kilometers north of Manila. In the coming years, this entire area is set to become the first smart, green, and disaster-resilient metropolis in the country. New Clark City will be a well-connected 21st century hub for tourism, business, sports, sustainable living, government offices, entertainment, universities, and cultural events. Join me as I take you on a detailed tour of several key buildings that have already been completed behind me. I'll also provide the latest updates on other incredible structures and large-scale projects that will soon be in the works. It's a thrilling time to be here in this part of the Philippines, and I'm so glad I can guide you through this special overview of New Clark City. Now, without further ado, let's get started. Come on. First off, let's talk about the gigantic size of this land, which at the moment is still largely undeveloped. In total, the planned metropolis of New Clark City covers an area of 9,450 hectares. That's a little more than one and a half times the size of Manhattan Island in New York City. It sits within the much larger Clark Special Economic Zone, which is located just to the north of Clark Main Zone. Once the largest American military base overseas, Clark is now a thriving freeport with multiple megaprojects of their own. For further context, feel free to check out my full Clark history documentary by clicking here or the first link in the description below. Additionally, click here or the second link below to get an exclusive look at Clark International Airport's brand new state-of-the-art terminal, which is scheduled to open later this year. The Bases Conversion and Development Authority, or BCDA, is the government corporation that owns and manages New Clark City in partnership with private corporations. While this massive development broke ground in 2016, construction of the first phase didn't begin until 2018. The completed structures I'll be showing you today are part of Phase 1A of the National Government Administrative Center. Essentially, this is the emblematic core of New Clark City that served as the primary location for the 30th Southeast Asian Games, also called the Sea Games, in late 2019. In order to complete several world-class venues for the Games, construction of Phase 1A took only 18 months at a cost of 13.5 billion Philippine pesos. This international sporting event catapulted New Clark City and its ambitious future into the spotlight. Despite the pandemic, which wiped out nearly all public events just months after the Sea Games closing ceremony, BCDA and major investors like Philinvest, MTD Clark, and Wittes are pushing forward with efforts on the next phases of development. The overall vision encompasses a well-planned, thriving, sustainable urban community with a population of 1.2 million inhabitants, employment opportunities for 600,000 people, and 60% of all land set aside as beautiful outdoor open spaces. On top of that is resiliency. Despite being on the highly active Ring of Fire in the Pacific, New Clark City is strategically located over 50 kilometers inland, which eliminates the risk of damage caused by tsunamis. Nearby mountain ranges dampen the destructive winds of typhoons, while storm drains are built to handle a once-in-a-thousand-year flood. Also, with the nearest fault line 19 kilometers away, all buildings are constructed to withstand a magnitude 8.5 earthquake or higher. In fact, some buildings are even equipped with earthquake accelerometers. And in the event of a volcanic eruption, they can withstand ashfall up to one meter thick. 
Now, let's get a closer look at the sports facilities and buildings that make up the National Government Administrative Center here in New Clark City. One of the main structures of the New Clark City Sports Hub is the iconic athletic stadium just behind me, which hosted several sporting events, as well as the closing ceremony of the 30th Sea Games two years ago. Here is a small park dedicated to the games, as well as the tower and cauldron where the flame shone brightly over the course of the competition. Now, this is impressive to say the least. The stadium has 20,000 seats, but future expansion may raise the capacity to 30,000. It was designed by an internationally recognized architecture firm here in the Philippines, Buji Royal Architecture and Design. I should note that they are responsible for the distinctive Filipino designs of several notable structures in the area, including the Aquatic Center, New Sokovia Bridge, and Clark International Airport's new terminal. The vibrant orange color of these beams and seats, which I absolutely love, is actually patented and labeled as active orange. It represents both local sunsets and the lava of nearby Mount Pinatubo, a prominent volcano that violently erupted in 1991 after being dormant for 400 years. Mount Pinatubo actually served as the main inspiration for the stadium's design. The large oval shape and basin within evoke Pinatubo's crater while the active orange symbolizes fire, as well as the heat and energy of athletes. I must say that it adds tremendous warmth and life against the black and gray you can see elsewhere. Furthermore, pyroclastic material and volcanic debris, known as lahar, were mixed in with the concrete you see on the floors, walls, and pillars. Here's a neat illusion. The scattered collection of orange and black seats around the stadium makes it appear as if various seats are occupied from a distance, even when the stadium is completely empty. The rubberized track is made to last 10 years, and the facility as a whole meets global standards of the International Association of Athletics Federations. There's a luxurious VIP section with elevated sweeping views of the track and field. And on the ground floor, you'll come across a large indoor workout facility with a full 100 meter sprint track. This is perfect for athletes who need to train in the middle of the rainy season. Next door is an oval warm-up track that features the same radio sensors as the stadium. Using RFID technology, these sensors allow athletes' movements to be precisely timed. The athletic stadium stands as an exquisite world-class venue that will likely bring international sporting events, concerts, and public festivities right here to New Clark City for decades to come. A short walk down the street from the athletic stadium is this eye-catching open-air aquatic center, featuring a 10-lane Olympic-sized competition pool, a professional dive pool with five diving boards and five diving platforms, and tiered seats on one end for 2,000 spectators. This Bougie Royal design is just phenomenal in all directions. There's a warm bamboo color theme throughout, and the shape was inspired by a traditional Filipino fish trap called a baklar. The prism patterns on the roof represent the giant Christmas lanterns of San Fernando to the south, and can especially be appreciated at night when fully illuminated. There are two giant screens on opposite ends, and get this, there is even an underwater sound system. Ooh, it is hot out here. I could really use a jump in the pool right now. Over here is an eight-lane training and warm-up pool, which can also be used for local competitions. Now this is really cool. Right here is a full-body dryer outside of the locker rooms. I would love to have one of these in my bathroom, but honestly, I don't think it would fit. Now let me show you another neat feature of this aquatic center. Steps away from the diving pool is this indoor dry land training area. It provides a safe, impact-free space for professional divers to practice their jumps, flips, and landing techniques. Instead of water, athletes dive into a pool of rectangular pieces of foam. 
trust me, it's tons of fun. But getting out is much harder than you might think. Uh, uh, success. Here are several trampolines with bungees and harnesses for further routine practice. It makes for a terrific workout, but I'll admit, I have a ways to go before I can achieve a proper flip. Well, I think I'm out of shape, but that was fun. You'll notice that many other parts of the aquatic center are appealing and spacious. Large glass panels and smooth concrete make for a sleek, modern look. Here's another workout facility with everything a competitive swimmer or diver would need for a day in the gym. Take a peek at these sprawling locker rooms featuring 15 showers, including one that is PWD accessible. As for the VIP experience, there are impressive premium lounges featuring artwork and floor-to-ceiling windows. The seats at the very top offer terrific high-angle views of the pools below. Personally, inside and out, I find this aquatic center to be absolutely stunning and truly top-notch. I can't wait to attend an international competition here in the near future. Okay, I think I finally have my chance to get up there and dive in. Well, I don't know if I can dive, I'm not a great diver, but I'll jump in regardless. Let's go. so ready for this, but I think I forgot one thing. Wait, I can fix that. Ah, oh, that was exhilarating. Oh, this feels so good. Well, I'd better stop messing around. After all, we have a tour to continue. Apart from sports venues in the National Government Administrative Center, there is this large office building that highlights another key purpose of New Clark City. It's simply referred to as government building. Its floor area covers 28,000 square meters, and it will partially be used as the Integrated Operations Center for Disaster Response Management. As mentioned earlier, this new metropolis is intended to be well-designed and incredibly resilient, even in some of the worst of circumstances. Limited space, congestion, aging structures, and immediate proximity to the sea and fault lines leave Manila quite vulnerable to major natural catastrophes. A number of government agencies in the Philippines intend to have satellite offices in New Clark City, so that in the event of a devastating natural disaster in Metro Manila, such as a typhoon, tsunami, or earthquake, the Philippine national government will still be able to operate and immediately respond to a crisis from their backup facilities here in northern Luzon. The government building here has two towers with a three-story bridge. Terraced rice paddies, which can be found all over the region, served as the inspiration for the design. As with many of the structures in New Clark City, you can see how the architecture offers a distinctly Filipino, organic look and feel. Quite remarkable. Just across from the stadium are the residences, a cluster of residential buildings with a total of 516 fully furnished units that will be able to accommodate up to 1,000 government employees. Residents can enjoy additional features including a swimming pool, basketball court, volleyball court, community center, and garden areas. There's even a dedicated spot on the roof for drying clothes. Next door is the Athletes' Village, which can accommodate up to 1,500 athletes, coaches, and visitors across 525 units. It's intended to be a training hub for national athletes of the Philippines and offers everything from fitness facilities and conference rooms to a kitchen and dining area. Later on, portions of the Athletes' Village may also be used as dormitories for students studying at universities in New Clark City.
We are now behind the Residences and Athletes Village, and this landscape green area is called River Park. It currently stretches for 1.4 kilometers along this stream, but it will be significantly expanded in the near future. It's the perfect place to play, exercise, socialize, sit in the shade, soak in the natural beauty, and admire several amazing art installations. Here is my favorite. Dome Village, designed by Filipino artist Bernardo Paking, consists of four wooden domes, each with its own style and theme. There's the mangrove dome, geodesic dome, natural dome, and coral dome. They are all linked by narrow cable suspension bridges, allowing visitors to intimately explore these unique installations. Take a closer look at the natural dome. It resembles an earth mound, measures 10 meters in diameter, and is made entirely of reclaimed timber from railroad ties and wooden homes that were destroyed by the Mount Pinatubo eruption 30 years ago. This certainly beats a traditional jungle gym any day. Steps away, you come across these charming red viewing pods donated by world-renowned industrial designer Kenneth Kabunpue, who is from Cebu. As you walk along the river park path, you notice other pieces of outdoor art amongst native trees and foliage, covered restrooms and storm canopies, a playground, and even a small amphitheater. This once again demonstrates how New Clark City is intended to be a modern green metropolis with an ideal environment to live, work, play, and learn. There are a few more buildings that I want to quickly point out. Just behind me is the Commercial Center, which will soon house a visitor center, convenience stores, restaurants, and a barber shop. A short distance away is the New Clark City Polyclinic, operated by the Philippines General Hospital and University of the Philippines. The building offers complete emergency care facilities with an 18-bed capacity, and there are already plans to expand the polyclinic to include hundreds of beds as the city grows. Now, here's a fantastic feature of the smart urban planning that went into New Clark City's layout from the very beginning. Not only are there wide streets with multiple lanes in either direction, but there are both bike paths and pedestrian walkways on both sides of the streets. Furthermore, all the utility cables are buried underneath the pedestrian lanes, thus freeing up space above ground with unobstructed views of the surrounding natural landscapes and impressive architecture. In the next couple of years, New Clark City will be incredibly well connected by offering a wide range of transportation options. An express road has already been built to the Subic Clark Tarlac Expressway, known as Essitex, and as early as next year, runners, bikers, and motorists will be able to take these lanes and pathways all the way to Clark on another dedicated link road. About 20 kilometers to the south, motorists will be able to reach this area at the northern edge of Clark in just 15 minutes. I'm standing on the new six-lane Sokobia River Bridge, and with its beautiful orange arches, this is bound to be another iconic attraction in the area, as well as a symbolic gateway between Clark International Airport, which is right over here, and New Clark City. Once more, I'll point out how bikers and pedestrians will be able to take advantage of these separate lanes that will ultimately merge with bike paths and walkways already built in Clark. Another exciting mega project already in the works is the PNR North-South Commuter Railway, which will connect Clark to Metro Manila, reducing travel times between the two regions to just under an hour. Northern sections of the line are expected to be fully operational in the next three to four years. Oh, and get this, Clark's free bus service, the Loop Bus, will provide convenient public transportation for locals and visitors between bus stops in Clark and New Clark City. Basically, it will be easier than ever to get up north for a major festival in River Park or a concert in the athletic stadium over the weekend. You can sign me up. Back here in New Clark City, what I've shown you is just the beginning. 
there's plenty to look forward to as numerous other projects prepare to break ground. Campuses for the University of the Philippines and Technology University of the Philippines will soon be built, as well as a national sports academy. The Supreme Court's first Judiciary Regional Center is also due to be constructed in the area, and a brand new BSP currency production facility will replace the current Central Bank Money Printing Building in Manila. Thus, all Filipino banknotes and coins will one day come from New Clark City. The Green Metropolis will also be the future home of the Virology Science and Technology Institute of the Philippines, Agro-Industrial Hub and National Seed Technology Park, a sprawling 400-hectare Wittis Banyan Tree Luxury Mountain Resort, and the Sky Blue Golf Club and Resort. PhilInvest, one of the largest developers in the Philippines, is already in the process of subleasing 100 hectares of land to companies like Lazada and Shopee as part of an expansive mixed-use industrial development down the road from the National Government Administrative Center. While there are no firm completion dates for all these large-scale projects, especially during the pandemic, the long list of construction plans reveals tremendous interest, potential, and room for rapid growth for both government agencies and private investors. As you can see, New Clark City is a marvel of an ultra-modern metropolis in the making, with artwork and architecture that beautifully reflects Filipino design, culture, and natural landscapes. It's been such a pleasure for me to take you along for this grand tour, and I'd like to thank BCDA, PhilInvest, and all the staff within the National Government Administrative Center for making it all happen. If you would like to learn more about New Clark City and get the latest updates on new projects, be sure to take a look at the description below for details. From Luzon, Philippines, I wish you and your loved ones many happy trails ahead. Stay safe, stay well, and I'll see you again soon. Well, I'm here with my tour guides for the day. We've got Jim, Jackie, Hello. and Zane. Hi. On a golf cart right now, going through the River Park. River Park. But the, there are still a number of snakes here. Really? Snakes? What kind of snakes? The Philippine Cobra. The Philippine Cobra? <laughs> <laughs> Are you trying to keep people away? <laughs> I know some people that are terrified of snakes. I like snakes. Yeah, well, but, well, I find them pretty cool. Oh, I good. Used to be scared of reptiles. Oh, another snake lover. We're yeah. still, uh... <laughs> but not cobras. And uh, the, these, the artist is a Filipino, but based in New Zealand already. Wow, that's fascinating. And what I love is that it's an art installation and a playground. It is, yeah. I know. I would have loved this as a kid. <laughs> Just running across these suspension bridges. Wow, take a look at that. Have you thought about installing a zip line? <laughs> to get down and start over? That would be something. If you're thirsty, instead of carrying your water bottle, just get a mango and then... Oh, wow, they are growing right here. Some fresh mangoes, yeah. This is part of the grand welcome here. <laughs> I get to be on the big screen. Well, I'm sure that would dry you off pretty quickly. Yeah. No need for a towel, huh? Can I, can I give the wave to start the games? Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully we, the Philippines will be hosting the, uh, the next uh, Asian Games in, 19, in 2030. You see, even the lines, the lines, there are only four firms in the world that, uh, that do the lining of the truck, that are certified to do the lining. Well, they keep telling me that I should try, so... I think they're sending me a message I need to get in shape, right? So, uh, are we going to do a sprint now? Go!